All right, it's Barry, and today on Grow It, I'm going to take you on a full walkthrough of my custom DIY greenhouse irrigation system. So just a quick intro for this one. I've been thinking of some kind of way that I can make watering easier because it takes absolutely ages when I come over in the morning, especially in the summer, and I've got to come every morning to do the watering before I go to work. I've been looking for some kind of way to make all of that easier for myself. So I've come up with this, basically, it's a simple irrigation system that I can attach a hose pipe to my greenhouse and it water all of the plants that are in there at the same time and I can sit down, drink my coffee while that's doing that, and I can just have a nice morning instead of having to rush around and everything because it's really nice here, especially in the summer, all of these birds singing, and it'd be nice to just enjoy that instead of having to just run around with the horse pipe like a lunatic. So it's a really cheap system. It costs me maybe 20 pound in parts altogether, and that's including all the stuff that I've got left over that I'm gonna do the polytunnel with as well. Um, it took quite a while to install because of various different bits and bobs that I've had to sort of figure out along the way. So hopefully if you're going to do this or do something similar, you'll be able to just look at this system and avoid all of those mistakes and keep it really simple like I've got it in there now. So I'm going to go to the back of the greenhouse. We're going to start where the water goes into the greenhouse and then eventually we'll end up at where it comes out at the plant. So I'll show you all of the different connectors and things and pipes and bits and bobs that I've used along the way. And yeah, it's really good. It works absolutely perfectly. So hopefully you'll be able to do something similar if that's what you're after. Let's go and have a look and see how it goes. So here we are, we're starting at the back of the greenhouse and we're starting here because this is where the water's coming in. Um, this blue pipe is coming from the main supply, so this is coming from the tap on the allotment. Um, and that is just connected here to the back of this with a normal male-to-male uh, -male connector and then two normal hose lock adapters just there. And as you can see, this is sort of like um, a makeshift splitter. This green pipe is going on to the rest of the allotment and I've got a sprayer on the end of that so that I can use that at the same time if I need to. But generally, I don't think the pressure is going to hold up to that, but it just means I can leave it all connected up and not have to worry about disconnecting things and messing about with all that. So this is just a normal male tap adapter like what you'd see on the end of your tap for your hose lock to connect up to. And then this red stopper here, this is basically a tap that stops that flow going into the greenhouse altogether so if i do want to use this other hose pipe when i'm spraying the polytunnel or whatever i can just turn this off the greenhouse won't get any water and then i can use that at full pressure and yeah it's basically as you can see pieces of normal hose pipe i got this for 10 pound i think it was it was 10 pound for 30 meters home bargains um and then this is just on normal um irrigation like irrigation pieces so this is not a, a nine millimeter uh, sorry a 14 millimeter t um the hose pipes 14 millimeters and then all the other piping and everything i use is 14 millimeters as well so everything fits together really nicely um and these they're all available online i got all these from a, a, an aquarium shop um, and a couple of bits from a hydroponic shop online as well but yeah mainly you can get anything like this from an aquarium shop any like t connectors and elbow joints and things like that so i'll show you some more of those now we're going to go into the greenhouse and see where this turns up. And here we are in the greenhouse. <laughs> right, so this is the back, the other side of what we've just been looking at. It basically just comes under the greenhouse frame. I've dug it out and then we've got an elbow joint here, which was just because this pipe isn't really strong enough for the job of going round corners and things like that. So I used that to um, stop the pipe from kinking basically and cutting off the supply altogether. And I'm sure you can hear it already, but this there's a bit of pressure coming out of this one actually, but this is one of my drippers. So this is just shooting out water all the time on this nice little lettuce, which is doing really well actually from when I first planted it. It didn't look like it was gonna uh, take, but they have and they look really nice. So from where we were we've got a t-junction here so this water's coming in and it's getting split into two which takes it left to the normal bed here where is where i'm going to be growing all my peppers and everything and then it also goes to the right which is where i grow all my tomatoes and things so that supply is coming in 
going left to this bed, going right to this bed. And just there you can see we've got a red tap and that basically is to control the balance between the left and the right of the watering system. So as that water's coming in, I'm reducing the pressure going to the left, which increases the pressure to the right, because at the moment I've got more things growing on this side and more water coming out. So just to cover over this side, you can see when it gets to the corner there, we've just got an elbow joint, which makes it go around that corner a bit more neat. <laughs> and you'll notice actually just while I'm on that point, I've cable tied all of the bits of hose pipe to the, uh, to the connectors because they do shoot off under the water pressure without that. So it's worth just adding those for that extra bit of security because that has stopped it completely and they're perfectly fine now. Um, at each sort of junction along there, we've got some normal 14 millimeter, it's basically like aquarium pipe, and that doesn't need the zip ties. You can basically stick that in some hot water and that'll just mold around the, um, around the bit of the, uh, the, the junction there so it doesn't come back off again. It goes hard again and it won't shoot off under the water pressure. And this is just a straight piece. And along there, you can use like a small tool, which basically punches a hole in this and it lets you attach these little drippers in. I won't take it off because it's going to shoot. I'll show you a couple of those bits in a minute, just so that you get an idea of how they work. And we've got first of our drippers on there, which is, it should be a dripper, but because of the pressure it's shooting out, but that's normal. Um, like a normal dripper. I think this might be, yeah, I think the way this works, there should be another bit of pipe that goes on this end and it's like a pass-through dripper, so it'll just keep dripping despite having two bits of pipe on either end and you can connect them up in sequence. So I might actually just look at that at some point. And out of this end as well is also going to the grow bag over here. I've got, got one on there as well for that cucumber, which is keeping that nicely watered as well. So I've got four there for four lettuces and the, the one for the cucumber. And then moving along, I've got a completely different kind of dripper here. Same sort of junction up there. Just move down for these ones. And basically these are hanging baskets. They cost 20p each from the hydroponics place. So they're not very expensive at all. And that lets your water come through. And it's got like, um, let's see if I can get it to focus on. It's basically like a, a splitter in there like a sharp point and that makes it shoot out and you can use that like that just to get both plants at the same time so i've got a couple of those just to show you those as well but they're brilliant for hanging baskets because you can direct where your water's going to and not have it shooting out everywhere um, and these also let more water through so you can get more water coming through at a higher rate with these ones than the other ones because they, they just don't restrict that flow so the water is coming through faster but again, using these ones reduces your overall system pressure because the water's getting an easier time through it. So it is useful to have that little valve up there just to regulate that as well. Otherwise, everything will be just shooting out at this end because it's got an easier, uh, an easier job of getting out of those drippers. Right down here, I've got a cap on the end of this one, which is just like a stopper, basically a bit of a bung. And I've left that just so that I can uh, expand this. I can put more pieces here if I need to. I normally have grow bags here or pots. Um, but I can also connect up to that, go out to the door to the other greenhouse, which is just over there. Look at all that rubbish. I'm working on that. <laughs> um, so moving over to this side, I've got a couple of lettuces in here. This is my tomato bed traditionally. So... I like to keep my tomatoes in this one and resoil it and everything every year. Uh, where am I up to? Oh, trying to not make this too long and too boring. But uh, yeah, so in this one, we've got some red vein sorrel again. I wasn't sure that this was going to take when I put it in. Um, this started as hydroponics at work and it wilted loads when I put it in, but it is really picked up and that's doing quite nice. So it's basically, I've got this, I've got a lettuce. I've got a bit of um, cabbage there and these are basically here just to use the space. I suppose that's the best way of describing it. Just use the space while I'm waiting for the tomatoes to get bigger. I mean, to be honest, the low lying veg anyway, so they might be all right. We'll see how they go. And then along the front, there's a couple of weeds in there. And <laughs> these were from the direct sowing uh, video that I did a couple of weeks ago. 
Um, I did a load of marigolds and things along this front bed just to uh, go as companion plants with those tomatoes, and they're coming up quite nicely. There is, like I said, there's a couple of weeds and things that are growing in there that definitely aren't marigolds. Um, I'll sort them out at another point. But yeah, coming out of this junction here, again, we've got a number of pipes coming out. We've got one of these sprayers per tomato plant. This one's working particularly well. Um, sometimes you can find like this here, we've got one coming out. It's doing the sorrel there, and then it's going along the front with, see, I don't know what's happened to that. Uh, they'll twist round. The, this is basically um, small irrigation pipe. I can't, I think it's four millimeter or five millimeter, but they're all the same size because they've all got the same connectors on them. So these twist to adjust the rate of flow. Um, with higher pressure, you can make it shoot out like that one, like a nice little sprinkler, which is quite nice. Um, but when they're running in one pipe, running a lot sequence, I've got it going quite long along there. This pipe struggles with pressure. It doesn't get enough pressure to, through to support that many. So it does come out, it's getting them wet and everything. So it's doing the job just not as well as I'd like. So I'm going to look at maybe running more from the main pipe along there in a sequence and running from that pipe over there as well, just to allow more water through basically to be able to water the rest of them. And that is going all the way along there. They're all the same kind of dripper. See those. Basically, you've got to just adjust the settings on these to get them to, to, to work properly. I've, I've not really messed around with these see look i mean you can get more coming through and you also have to bleed the air out of them as well because the air can get trapped if one's turned off so it is worth going along and bleeding that air out just so that it all works properly basically uh but yeah that's it everything in here every single plant is getting water and i don't have to do it and the main real benefit to this is if you're doing this at home or if you've got your own tap from the mains and you're not having to share it with everyone else like I'm doing here at the allotments, which is why I can't do it. You can just stick a timer on it. Um, maybe if you're going on holiday, you can just stick your timer on, leave it, and they'll get watered however many times you want a day for however long you want. They're really simple to use. You basically connect it to your tap and then stick your hose pipe onto that and it just turns the water on and off as you need. So really worth getting hold of one of those if you've got your own tap and you've got the patience to do all this um this took me maybe about three or four hours to put in including all the pipes shooting off and having to repair things and all this that and the other if you just go straight to using zip ties if you are using normal hose pipe that'll cut about an hour out because it was driving me mad but yeah i am going to do it to the rest at some point i'd like to have it where i can plug it in and then just turn off each section turn it on turn this off turn the polytunnel on turn the polytunnel off turn the beds on and it'd be great to just be able to just do that instead of having to walk around watering everything by hand which takes absolutely ages in the morning it takes like 20 25 minutes at the moment at least i mean this is now we're in the end of april when we're getting into summer it's probably taking like half an hour 45 minutes to give everything a proper watering when it's really hot because there's so many plants so just being able to plug it into the mains and let it water itself while I sit and drink a coffee or something would be absolutely amazing. But yeah, that's it. So really simple to do, really easy project, really cheap. I mean, like I said, this hose pipe cost me £10 and I've not used a great deal of it. I've still got pretty much three quarters of the roll, maybe half the roll, I don't know. Um... This pipe, the black pipe, the black plastic pipe, that's a bit more expensive. That generally comes by the meter. So I only really buy as much as I use. I think I've got five meters that I've been using. So I've maybe used three or four meters of that. I don't know. I've not got much of that left. So I'm going to have to get some more of that. That was why I went for the hose pipe because it's a lot cheaper just for transporting the water. And then you can attach your drippers to the more expensive pipe. Um, the smaller dripper irrigation pipe, that's really cheap. You can get that from aquariums. You use it for like um, bubblers and air pumps and that sort of stuff on fish tanks. So that's quite easy to get hold of. Um, if you're in the UK, you can also get it from Home Bargains. They do like um, a ir mini irrigation kit and it's got loads of those drippers, loads of the little um, T-junctions and things. 
Um, it's got some tap adapters and hose pipe adapters and little bits and bobs like that. And you get, I think, 25 meters maybe of the actual small irrigation pipe. And I think the 299, there was 299 last year, but I think the 399 this year. Um, I don't know what their excuse is for that because they probably had about a billion of them in stock anyway and they've just kept them in a warehouse until this year. But yeah, that's beside the point. But yeah, that is absolutely everything. And like I say, I can extend this a bit further once the chilies and things go in those pots. I can add more drippers along that pipe um, once the uh, chilies come and the peppers and everything. They're all going to be going into this bed, my peppers. So I don't know how many plants I'm going to have until they go in really. So I'll see how that goes and I'll add more if I need to. And there we go, that's it. So that's everything in here. I'll just nip over to the polytunnel and I will show you how much of that hose pipe I've got left because there's absolutely loads. And if I can do this for a tenner, you know, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good investment for the amount of time that it's gonna save. So I'll just nip over there and I'll show you that. <sighs> polytunnel. And this is how much of that hose pipe I've got left, the 30 meter roll. I've got absolutely loads of it. So I'm thinking I've probably got enough to do in here as well. I'd, I'd like to, because like I say, if it's only cost me a tenner to irrigate the polytunnel and the greenhouse, that would be absolutely fantastic. You can see my grape plant, it's doing absolutely smashing. Um, yeah, it'd be good to be able to just do them tomatoes and things like that. And then you're not having to, once they're absolutely massive in the summer, you're not having to sort of mess about avoiding leaves and things like that trying to not get them wet in the autumn so that the lights restricted and things um yeah it'd be good to be able to do that but like i said there's absolutely loads left on that so that cost me a tenner plus all whatever i've used on the thing in there so that's all there is to it hopefully if that is something that you're interested in and something that you want to have a go at yourself um you can really get stuck into that and get a couple of ideas from what I've done in there and hopefully not have to make all those mistakes and get absolutely soaked with pipes shooting off everywhere. And the best part about that system is that you can customize it for no matter like whatever it is that you want to water. So if you're gonna do a polytunnel like this, or you're gonna do your greenhouse like I've done over there with a couple of beds, you're gonna do your outdoor beds. It doesn't matter, you can just use the same principle wherever it is. If you're just using hanging baskets, you can use the same pipes, same connectors, run them up the wall and then just have them going along your um, hanging basket frame thing straight down into the basket. It'll do the exact same job. So if you've got loads of hanging baskets, loads of planters at your house, whatever it is, you can just run those pipes and it'll just water everything. So it doesn't have to be an allotment. You can use them at home and you could probably even use them in your house if you wanted to. I, I, I wouldn't want to because probably the pipes are going to shoot off at some point and make everything soak. So maybe just keep it to outside. But yeah, it's perfectly fine for every application don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with all of my other gardening videos i've got loads of projects loads of really cool things coming up as well so it's definitely worth getting subscribed get those notifications turned on and make sure that you don't miss all of my new videos because they're going to be coming pretty regular at the moment with all the different things that i've got lined up so do keep an eye on that we'll see how that system gets on um be doing a may update pretty soon i'll do a bit of a walk around of the whole allotment show you all the different plants and things that i've got going on and hopefully that system is going to be holding up and uh, still working so nothing's going to be shooting off everywhere so yeah i think that is all for today so i'll see you next time <laughs>